It's a tiny town located in the dead center of Whidbey Island, founded in 1852 by Captain Thomas Coop. Today, we're in Coopville, and what better place to start than at the museum? Well, there's a lot to, to know and a lot to learn about the uh, early history of Coopville. Like what? I, I heard somewhere that Coopville is the second oldest settlement in the state, is that right? That's what we believe. Yeah. Yeah. That, it was a long uh, time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time ago. But uh, yeah, uh, Stillicum is uh, the oldest, supposedly, in western Washington. And I also heard somewhere that at one point Coopville was giving Seattle a run for its money as far as largest town. Well, yeah, there wasn't much going on in Seattle in the 1850s when, when Coopville came into being. And with the natural landing of, of E.B.'s Landing right down on the beach, this uh, Coopville on, right on Penn Cove, you know, sheltered waters, was a, just a very logical place for a deep, deep water port. Tell us what someone could see when they come into the museum here. Oh boy, we, uh, we go back 120,000 years in history. We have an Ice Age tree on exhibit here that was found uh, on the island. Everything in the museum was, was gathered from the island, found or gathered or, or given from pioneer families on the island. So it starts then. Uh, we get into our Native American collection. We've got a huge collection of uh, Native American artifacts here um, that are constantly rotating through the exhibit. First, first car in Whidbey Island. That belonged to uh, one of the families here on the island. Uh, they bought it used in 1904. And another great thing for visitors for Coopville, you have a walking tour, is that right? With the mm -hmm. history of buildings that from the 1800s. That's right, and our walking tours uh, generally start right here in front of the museum. And we just walk people through town and uh, let them see uh, in living color what they just saw in the museum in black and white. And that's, that's one of the great things. Another great thing about Coopville is you can look at these old historic photos and go outside and, and see them. The, the buildings are still here. Most of the buildings are still here. Streetscape has changed very little in uh, you know, the last 150 years. Well, there's not a lot of streetscape to change. I mean, how big is Coopville, right? Like like four blocks long? It depends how you measure your blocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess yeah. so, right. Right. So, and I also heard something about um, the pier, of course, is something that everyone should visit when they come to Coopville. You can't miss it. It's the pier. <laughs> um, but at, at the end of the pier, there's a building that has a special friend inside, right? Friends. Friends? Yes. Oh, I thought it was just Rosie, but there's Rosie, more than Rosie? Yeah, Rosie the Great Whale is there. Uh, juvenile male whale skeleton uh, that was preserved by our local beach watchers. Rosie uh, is, has been joined by a uh, sea lion. It's been also preserved by the uh, beach watchers, very active group, and also a doll's porpoise. And another interesting thing about Coopville is Coopville is the only town that exists inside of a national historical reserve, which Eby's Landing is. Oh, that's right, Eby's Landing. We actually get a tour of that later in the show. But that's huge, right? The reserve? This is preserve. about, uh, I believe it's 24 square miles. And um, the first of its kind, first in the nation back in 1978. So it almost sounds like history is an industry here in Coopville. It really is. Yeah. It's a very popular uh, destination. Uh, we, we see tourists from all over the world in little old Coopville. In fact, history is uh, still very much alive in Coopville. You know, a great example of that is our, our uh, water festival, which is uh, Indian canoe races that were started back in 1929 and ran up through the beginning of World War II, and then there was a hiatus until the early 1980s. They started up again, and uh, they're still doing them the same way. They use 50-foot-long uh, uh, dugout racing canoes, and uh, that's mid-May every year. And I'm sure the Chamber of Commerce uh, website will have info on that water festival from year to year. And speaking of websites, the museum website? If you need more information, it's islandhistory.org.